Okay, let's solve rational equations. First off, a rational equation is one that contains at least one rational expression. Now, if, if the rational equation is a proportion, okay, and remember from previous years, a proportion is when something in the form A over B equals C over D. Then it can be easier to solve it by cross multiplying. Otherwise, if it's not a proportion, you want to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD to clear the denominators from the equation. This process produces extraneous solutions, so you need to remember to check your answers. Basically, you're checking them against your restricted variables. Okay, so what are the solutions of the rational equation? We have A over B equals C over D. And normally, I would cross multiply, but when I start to look at that, I notice that my denominators are the same. And if my denominators are the same, then I can go ahead and put my numerators equal to each other. x squared plus 2x minus 3. It's a quadratic equation because I have an exponent of 2. So that means I need to set everything equal to 0. So that's x squared plus x minus 2. That, of course, factors 2x plus 2 times x minus 1. And that gives me x equals negative 2 or positive 1. Now, what kind of restrictions did I have? x could not be equal to negative 2 because that makes my denominator 0. So that limits that solution or gets rid of it, eliminates it. So all I have is x equal to 1. Okay. Now look at the next example. We have not a proportion, so I'm going to find out what the LCD is, LCM. So the LCM, this is x plus 1, x plus 4, x plus 4, so my LCD is going to be x plus 1 times x plus 4. So when I write it, because I have an equation, I do not have to multiply by 1, but I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the same thing. So I'm multiplying by x plus 1 times x plus 4. And I'm going to multiply everything inside of these brackets by this expression. So when I multiply this, the x plus 1 cancels. So I'm left with x times x plus 4. When I multiply the second one, the x plus 4 cancels. So that leaves me with 3 times x plus 1. And same thing here, x plus 4 cancels. So I'm left with x plus 3 times x plus 1. Okay? Our multiplication is commutative, means the order doesn't matter which in which way I write those factors. Okay? So there, I need to multiply everything out. That gives me x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 3 equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. That's FOIL. Inside is 3x. Outside is 1x is where I got my middle term. Okay? Again, quadratic, so you should, uh, because I have a second degree, so I'm going to bring everything to one side. Uh, the x squareds end up canceling, or they drop out of your equation. Oh, the 4x's do as well, and the 3's do as well. So that leaves me with 3x equal to 0 uh, for a final answer of my problem of x equal to 0. What kind of restrictions do I have? x cannot be negative 1 or negative 4, which is not what I have here. Okay? 
So that's the process of what you want to do. We have a word problem here. You can ride your bike to a store four miles away to pick up things for dinner. When there's no wind, you ride at 10 miles an hour. Today, your trip to the store and back took one hour. What was the speed of the wind today? So this is a distance problem. So we really do best when we organize our information in a, uh, let's do rate times time equals distance. Okay, and we have two things going on. We're going to the store and we're coming back from the store. Now, they said when there's no wind, I ride at 10 miles an hour. So, um, one way I'm going to be riding with the wind, and one way I'm going to be riding against the wind. Does it matter which one is which? No, but the wind is blowing. So you just need to be consistent and make sure one of them is plus and one of them is minus. Okay? Um, my distance is four miles away. So how do I get my time? If I know rate times time equals distance, then that means that the time is equal to the distance divided by the rate. So these are my times. Okay? And it told me that my total trip to the store and back took one hour. So I'm going to take my total time and make it add up to an hour. So my equation will be 4 over 10 plus x plus 4 over 10 minus x equals 1. Okay? We have a rational equation because I have rational expressions in there. And it's not a proportion, so I'm going to solve it by multiplying both sides by the LCD, which in this case is going to be 10 plus x times 10 minus x. Okay, so 10 plus x cancels with 10. I don't cross it out over here because then it makes it hard to know when you have to distribute. So I'm multiplying again. This ex these expressions by everything in here, okay? So my 10 plus x cancels, leaving me with 4 times 10 minus x. My 10 minus x cancels, leaving me with 4 times 10 plus x. And hopefully you recognize that's a plus b, a minus b, which is a squared minus b squared. So let's continue to solve, and we get 40 minus 4x plus 40 plus 4x equals 100 minus x squared. I like my x squared to be positive, so I'm going to take it over here. Leaving me, I get x squared minus 4x and plus 4x goes away, becomes 0. Uh, 40 and 40 is 80, minus 100 is minus 20. Um, I ended up without an x term, so I'm actually going to take that 20 back over there and find out that x equals, of course it equals plus or minus the square root of 20. We pick up our calculator and find out that that's 4.47. So I go back and I read my problem to figure out they want to know what was the speed of the wind today. I can't have a negative wind speed. So the speed of my wind is 4.4, oops, didn't write that correctly. It is 4.47 miles per hour. Uh, we can do MPH, that works. Okay. The last problem that we have to talk about today is to use a graphing calculator, okay? We've talked about this a lot in class. Um, the thing to remember, um, what are the solutions? Um, I want to do it algebraically again to show you real quick. This is a proportion. So if you cross multiplied, you would get x plus 2 equals 5 minus 10x. 
Uh, that gives me 11x equals 3, and x equals 3 over 11. Let's go check it on our graphing calculator. Okay, we have two methods that we have talked about with our graphing calculator. One is the intersect method, and one is the zero method. Okay, with the intersect method, we set y sub 1 equal to something to the left side of our equation generally, and y sub 2 equal to the other side of our equation. So if I go to a graphing calculator and I type in the left side of my equation was, it is x plus 2 divided by, and remember whenever we have an operation in our numerator or denominator, we have to put parentheses around it. So that was the left side, x plus 2 over 1 minus 2x. And the right side is 5. So when I hit graph, oh, I have to hit enter for that. All right. Oh, uh, my window doesn't appear to be big enough. Let's get make my y-axis go a little bit higher here. So I hit graph, and it's still not coming out. So I'm going to have to start all over again, figure out what's going on. Oh, there it came up. Okay, so I have y equal to 5. There's my point of intersection. You can go on a graphing calculator, hit second calc intersection, and choose the two equations that you want to intersect. And there's your answer. It says it intersects at the point at the point 0 0.2727 comma 5. Well, back in our problem, we're only interested where what x is. So if it said 0.2727 comma 5, that means that x equals 0.2727. Well, if you put this in a calculator, you will find out that it is also 0.2727. 27 repeating. So it's a way to check your answer. The zero method means that we rewrite the equation and we set everything equal to zero. x plus 2, 1 minus 2x minus 5 equal to zero. That is your y sub 1. And then on our graphing calculator we choose second calc and zero, and we've talked about that a lot. Do your left bound, right bound. But that's the summary of 8.6, solving rational equations.